Okay. I've been wanting to make this video literally ever since I started this YouTube channel. I've just been pushing it back for so long because I know there's definitely gonna be some repercussions of me making this to a degree. I didn't realize that nobody talked about this. And anytime you look up rhythmic gymnastics, for example, on YouTube or anywhere else, it's masteries or risks or how to do different techniques or competitions. No one ever really talks about the gymnast themselves. For everyone that's ever been a competitive rhythmic gymnast, I feel like this needs to be said and a lot of people don't want to go public with it because of fear. On my Instagram, I posted a little message and I was like, hey, if you're a rhythmic gymnast and you'd like to speak on my video, let me know. And every single person that messaged me wanted to be anonymous. My name is Gina Poldnov. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is your first video watching of mine. This one's a little more serious. This is a video that I've been needing to do and I've just been not doing it. Yeah. start off by saying regardless of anything that I'm about to say in this video I'm really incredibly thankful for the sport. Rhythmic gymnastics is not a popular sport in the United States at all. It's actually the most popular sport in Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria, Serbia because everyone in the United States only knows artistic gymnastics for the most part but there's six different types of gymnastics. Artistic, rhythmic gymnastics which is the gymnastics that I did started when I was about either two and a half or three, and then I quit going into my senior year of high school, so I was, I think, 16. Trampoline, tumbling, acrobatic, and then group. Rhythmic gymnastics was founded in 1940s in Soviet Union, uh, Russia, but back then USSR. In 1961, it was originally called modern gymnastics. They then changed it to rhythmic sportive gymnastics, and then officially called it rhythmic gymnastics, which is what it is today. Today. The first world championship was in Budapest in 1963. Yes, 1963. The first Olympic Games was in 1984 in Los Angeles. And the first group Olympic Games, because you can do rhythmic gymnastics either as an individual or you can do it in a group, but it's most commonly on an individual level. But group was first in the Olympics in 1996. Anytime I ever tell any of my friends that I did rhythmic gymnastics, they're like, oh yeah, with the bars, you do flips and stuff, and then you have to explain to them and they don't understand. So this video is also made for everyone else. Anytime anyone will ask me about rhythmic gymnastics, I will just send them the link to this video and now you can send the link to this video to them. Rhythmic gymnastics is heavily influenced by ballet. It is an incredibly beautiful sport that combines athleticism and art. In rhythmic gymnastics, you have five total apparatuses are rope, ball, hoop, clubs, and ribbon. And each season, every year, you only have four different apparatuses and it's usually either rope, ball, hoop, clubs or it could be like ball, hoop, clubs, ribbon. The goal essentially in rhythmic gymnastics is to see how much risk is a gymnast willing to take accurately so that they don't lose points. So for example, we have things called risks where you have to toss your apparatus and then do something under it and then catch it either with your legs or with your hand, or if you do it with no vision, so you catch it in your neck. You have masteries, which same thing, it's based off of how much risk a gymnast takes within this mastery, within this turn, within this 
element. The goal is also not to lose points. You can do all of these difficult elements and masteries, but if you drop or if you don't catch properly, you're gonna lose points. And every single little point matters. The sport requires an amount level of flexibility. You need to have really, really good eye coordination. Your reflexes have to be on point. You need to be able to calculate how far you have to throw your apparatus in order to do what you have to do under it in order to catch the apparatus a certain way. A lot and a lot and a lot of thinking and calculation goes into the sport and especially flexibility. Training wise, your average gymnast, depending on what level, I'm gonna just start talking about higher level gymnasts, level seven and up. Even though as the little kids have to go through it too, that can be anywhere between three to five hours. I and most of the girls at my gym would train anywhere between four to six days, three to five hour days. The three to five hours would entail if you do five to six hours of training every day you're probably doing one private a ballet lesson and then you're training at practice which is usually three to four hours most of us did ballet on top of rhythmic gymnastics on the weekends or we would have private lessons ballet is really strongly integrated into rhythmic gymnastics especially with the amount of flexibility you must have and turnout and point those would be average training days rhythmic gymnastics is also incredibly expensive each of your apparatus alone your ball cost anywhere between $80 plus your hoop cost $50 and then you have to buy tape so depending on how much color you want to put onto your hoop 20 plus dollars your clubs same thing they're probably around $80 plus tape anywhere between 15 plus ribbon your stick costs $40, your ribbon costs $30. Your leotards can cost anywhere between $200 to over $1,000 because also all of the leotards have Swarovski crystals. When you have private lessons with your coaches, that's $60 plus. Training every month, I believe, is two to $300. Competitions you have to pay for, which is probably $100 plus a coach's fee, which is, I think, maybe $50 plus hotel if you're staying out of state or even out of country. Your coaches, hotel fees, paying for your coaches to train you at the competition, also their food, literally everything. Rhythmic gymnastics is honestly such an expensive sport. I really have no idea how my mom was able to afford it or how. Okay, so now that I got all the technical stuff out of the way, if you have any questions also, please let me know in the comments. I will respond, or Nastasia will respond, or any gymnast watching this can respond to you. So don't don't be shy. Now we're gonna talk about what nobody talks about, which is the gymnast. I feel like I can say this for everyone. We have a really big problem in the rhythmic gymnastics community when it comes to mental health. Regarding body image, I'm gonna be talking about it from my experience because I don't think it's really fair for me to share other people's story. A lot of gymnasts, because of rhythmic gymnastics, struggled with eating disorders and if talking about eating disorders and listening about eating disorders triggers you, I recommend skipping out of this part of the video for maybe like two minutes. I was fortunate enough to not have to deal with bulimia and anorexia. I'm incredibly thankful that as a child, my I mean, this was also because of gymnastics, but as a child, I was not allowed to ever eat cereal. I wasn't really allowed to drink milk. I wasn't allowed to eat bread that often. I wasn't allowed to have saturated fats. We never had snacks in the house, chips soda, juice. In gymnastics, you need to be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly skinny, like literally like a stick. I'm gonna insert a picture right here of me. I believe I was like 16 and I thought I was overweight. I'm not gonna say the name of my gym either out of respect to some of the coaches that trained me there because I really, really appreciate them and thank them. They were like parents to me almost. I saw my coaches more than I saw my parents to a degree. I wasn't fat or overweight, but I was like, the chubbiest out of most of the other girls who are at my level as well. And 
so I would constantly get weighed and when I was younger we would have these summer intensive camps where we would train for like six hours and we would have lunch in between those six hours and my coaches would check my lunch and if I had anything that was unhealthy they would take it out and tell me that I can't have it. If you're remotely overweight or a little chubby when you're competing in rhythmic gymnastics judges will score you down than someone who's thinner than you and because of this a lot of gymnasts struggled with mental health and I had body dysmorphia I didn't have any eating disorders but I had body dysmorphia and I still have body dysmorphia to a degree to this day from gymnastics my whole entire life I thought I was fat because every single conversation in my life literally surrounded around my weight everyone would constantly talk about my weight and it literally destroyed me and my mom's relationship for a little bit but when I quit gymnastics she started realizing how toxic it was to talk about your weight to your child who barely ate anyways and trained and was mentally struggling but even now like my dad sometimes tries to comment on my weight and he thinks it's funny and people around my life sometimes comment about my weight and it really genuinely just triggers me so much. Anytime anyone brings my weight around, I literally just like want to cry and puke and starve myself. And even now sometimes like I have this really messed up mentality where I need to skip meals in order to be skinny or be pretty. And this is also just honestly a really big problem in the Russian community. I don't know why this is happening, but girls will literally starve themselves. I guess my look of it is mainly like rhythmic gymnastics Russian community. Everyone is so obsessed with it. And even when I was a gymnastics coach, after I quit gymnastics, I was a coach for a year. I hated it so much because even the coaches were talking about body weight and body image amongst each other all the time, 20 seven and they would call the girls fat or overweight and make fun of their weight and I was always called fat and overweight and people would make fun of my weight all the time in gymnastics my coaches would poke at me and make fun of my weight weight was literally the number one most important thing in rhythmic gymnastics I feel like it was really detrimental for a lot of people's mental health it carries with them for the rest of their lives and I could definitely relate to that it will definitely stick with me for the rest of my life and I also wanted to talk about not being able to grow up oh Oh my goodness. This one's crazy because I was definitely abducted of my childhood. After practice, I would never go hang out with friends. I didn't even really have friends in school. I mean, I had like some friends, but I never hung out with friends after school. I was never allowed to go to sleepovers. I never went to football games. I never went to dances. I never went to anything that normal kids would go to because I never had time because all I did was go to school and train. And so I also never had a boyfriend. I had my first kiss when I was like 16. Me amongst most of my rhythmic gymnastics friends all got their period 15 and plus because of how much the sport affects your body. If you were in rhythmic gymnastics, you either did really, really bad in school or you excelled at school, but you'd only sleep like three to four hours. Also, no one who did rhythmic gymnastics ever wore makeup outside of gymnastics. I didn't start wearing makeup until my junior year in college. During competitions, you have to wear so much makeup also, let's not forget about over-sexualization in our sport. Rhythmic gymnastics is very interesting. If you look at the leotards that we all had to wear, they're very, very tight so that the judges could see your body and a very tiny skirt. Literally, I don't know if this ever happened, but literally any random person can just walk into a competition, pay $20, pretend to be a dad or a mom. They can take photos of the girls, they can film the girls, different elements when they we have to lift our legs up like they can take photos of that. There were always photographers that girls would pay. We don't know if they're secretly perverted. And also, this happened in the artistic community, but this also happened in the rhythmic community. There was a doctor who was a physical therapist at the Olympic training camps, and he would sexually assault the girls. I'm not gonna talk on their behalf because that's not something I experienced. Trauma to your body. I still have really bad back problems in my lower back, in my upper back. I wake up feeling really sore, my knee sometimes hurt my hips sometimes hurt but I'm so thankful because I'm incredibly flexible like like can you do this 
Though I'm just gonna pass over this portion of the video to Nastasia Generalova, who is a really good childhood friend of mine. I can basically call her my sister. Love you, miss you. Also, I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little blurry, but she's in New York, I'm in LA. Hello everybody, my name is Nastasia Generalova and I'm a seven time US national team member for rhythmic gymnastics and I've been in the sport for 16 years. So it's basically my whole life. A little backstory on me is that uh, I'm Russian and this sport is extremely popular in Europe, Russia and Asia. So that's how I was put into the sport because my mom was Russian and she wanted me to have like a another aspect of Russianness aside of my blood and, and my culture. She put me into there and I fell in love with it when I was younger. Now that I'm out of it, I realized how rhythmic gymnastics really messes up your head. And as a matter of fact, all of my friends who are out of gymnastics now, it just it messes with their head. For starters, uh, for sure, the requirements for rhythmic, they prefer a very, very, very thin frame. Long legs, long arms. They weigh you every day or every other day. Depends on what level you're at. You're just always super cautious about food. I remember the days where my teammates and I, we just couldn't look at ourselves in the mirror because we were always so, we just hated our bodies. This day, I can't look at myself in the mirror and I, I'm trying to work on it, trying to work on my confidence, but it's really difficult. We're just so used to being so like so much under pressure and all eyes on us and coaches calling us names and stuff like that that's just the way it is regarding me personally i don't know about my other teammates but i do know that i faced a lot of racism in my sport as well as other gymnasts of color which there are practically none barely any gymnasts of color so growing up i never ever had somebody i could look up to in my sport who looked like me because nobody looked like me so i always thought something was wrong with me like why why were my muscles bigger than these other girls why why don't i have the same hair as them why isn't my skin the same? Every time I would travel internationally, the, the international girls, they're not used to girls of color. So, you know, I've had stories where they would say racist things to me. I also feel like at times the girls, even on my US team, could be a little bit stereotypical. Stereotypical as in ask me questions which they should know better. Like, is your, is your hair real? Greet me with the N word when none of them are black. They would post things on their social media and say the n-word. I remember I took screenshots of that and they wouldn't face any consequences or anything of that sort because everybody was in this bubble. R rhythmic gymnastics puts you in this like purity bubble where you are so disconnected from the real world in my opinion. You're so in immersed into gymnastics that you kind of forget about the outside world and that's how all the girls were in my opinion. I was like that at one point and I finally snapped out of it. Very unfortunate to see these girls as well as even the US Federation not really talk much about diversity in gymnastics. It's not just rhythmic gymnastics, it's artistic, acro, all of those. It's just like there's a lack of diversity and they barely talk about it. For example, with the Black Lives Matter movement that was happening, I reached out to USA Gymnastics regarding like, why haven't you guys posted anything? You know, you guys have one like one million followers, so many little boys and girls, grandmas, grandpas, moms, dads, brothers, like they all follow you, they all look up to you. You guys should say something about that because your top athlete happens to be black or of color like you should really address this and they just they didn't say anything about it for the first i would say two and a half weeks when they should have been on it from the jump just like nike just like nba just like the nfl they were they've been on it and i feel like usa gymnastics which is huge and so powerful should be doing the same in addition my department for rhythmic gymnastics didn't say a single word at all and that made me feel some type of way of course it's way too long to explain but i think it's extremely disrespectful that the head of the usa rhythmic federation never reached out to me never said anything and in addition she never even posted anything or, or did anything i doubt that she signed any petitions or I don't know, donated. Maybe she did, which is great. During the time while I was there, I felt very disconnected and I wish she could have reached out to me more because all of the judges, well, majority of the bigger judges reached out to me. The athlete representatives reached out to me. To my surprise, the like my athlete teammates did not reach out to me until 
they saw it was getting really bad with like the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement. It was getting very, you know, aggressive and it was getting very powerful at that point. And then they reached out to me and they're like, well, we don't know what to post. We don't know what to say, yada, yada, yada. I feel like they don't say anything until it affects them. And because Black Lives Matter did not affect them at all, the majority of them didn't say anything or they would post just because just just because it's a trend. It, it It's a trend, which it's not a trend. I really wish Rhythmic was more diverse. I'm really blessed that I could break some boundaries into this sport and I'm always advocating for it because I think rhythmic gymnastics is one of the most beautiful sports in the world. It just, it comes with a lot of cons and I don't think people understand how difficult this sport is. People take it as a joke, specifically in America. In Russia, it's, it's a whole different deal. But here, which, you know, it's here, Canada, Africa, South America, they don't really know what rhythmic gymnastics is. And it, I think, honestly, it's one of the most difficult, intricate sports in the world. And it's so underrated on this part of the world. <laughs> I hope in the future that more athletes of color would come in because once I'm gone, there's there's nobody else. So it has me wondering when will there be more athletes of color? They should have, you know, more judges of color, more diversity. It's a super expensive sport. Not many people can afford it. I personally could not afford it. At I couldn't afford it, that's why I had to start modeling so I could help myself and my mother. And also this, the stereotypes, you know, like, it's everything, starting from the hair, starting to the body types, it's, it's a lot of things and I feel like it needs to change and we need to normalize, you know, every type of body type because I feel like that's one of the biggest issues in rhythmic gymnastics. Yeah, but like and subscribe to Gina's YouTube channel. <laughs> So I feel like I touched on a pretty good amount of things. If you guys do have any more questions, leave them down below and I'll make a part two regarding rhythmic gymnastics if you guys want. I also want to talk about some positives really quick, obviously. First of all, I have lifelong friends. A lot of the girls who were not only in my gym, but out of my gym who I competed with, I've known for 10 plus years and there will literally be my friends for the rest of my lives. That's guaranteed. Even out of high school, I didn't keep most of my friends from high school traveling. I got to travel to almost every single state in the United States. I got to travel to a couple countries for competitions. So thankful for that. Such a fun experience. Not a lot of people are able to travel and I was able to do that and I'm so grateful for that. And I have a snow globe from almost every single state. Flexibility, durability, and my reflexes are amazing. I'm still really flexible. I still stretch almost every single day. I can still do a lot of the masteries with a lot of the equipment. I'm super thankful for that. It's a really cool skill to have. Always impresses people. It's always a great conversation starter. People are always like, oh wow, that's so cool. I'm so talented. So rhythmic gymnastics is a predominantly Russian sport. If you don't speak Russian and you do rhythmic gymnastics, you end up picking up um, a lot of Russian. A lot of my friends who were Americans picked up on a majority of Russian and can, when they hear certain words or phrases, they know exactly what our coaches are saying because all of our coaches coached in Russian. Even when I was a coach, I coached a lot of my girls in Russian because a majority of them were Russian speakers. I don't want to scare you away from the sport because it is amazing, it is beautiful, but there are a lot of downsides to it that USAG needs to fix. This isn't even everything, this isn't even half of it. This was literally just my little teeny weeny experience and a couple of my friends teeny weeny experience, but there's so much more to it. But yeah, USAG, get your shit together. I love you guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like it, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow Nostalgia on Instagram. Bye, thank you.